So today we're working on forward fold Uttanasana, intense pose. Well, we translate it as forward fold because that's what it looks like. So we're dealing with that intense factor today. We will uh, look at it from standing up to folding forward. I have a few students who cannot touch their feet yet, but I have to stress the yet point. Um, that's due to hamstring flexibility and also lower back flexibility. So we'll give modifications today for those two aspects and with uh, determination my students and also whoever wants to feel touch their feet will get there because it just takes repetition and intensity that's one of my teachers mottos repetition and intensity so keep doing it repeating it and keep having this undivided focus i am not at all warm I've just woken up and done my meditation but that's okay because we're working with a safe practice and we're letting our body give us feedback by having the, the correct engagements I will be able to get to the final pose because I know my body at the same time take care of yourselves and listen to your bodies and everyone's body is different so have that in mind Standing forward fold. So from standing up straight, so when you're folding forward, you're inhaling up and then you're exhaling. Now at the exhale, you want to press feet down, press inner feet and outer feet down, press center of the heels down, and then have this uh, root lock and stomach lock. So pelvic floor in and up, navel in and up, and the ribs are close to give us a more clear line. This Uddiyana Bandha, the stomach lock, navel in and up, that's what's going to help you to stretch your hamstrings while folding forward. It's important to fold forward and feel that you're almost going to trip over. So my toes are really working because otherwise I'm going to bring my hips back and fold forward. You don't want to bring your hips back, you want to keep sending sits bones, the bottom parts of the pelvis, into the heels and then heading forward. That's why the toes are really working. The weight is on the balls of the feet and almost on the toes. But you want to keep pressing the inner feet and the outer feet down and keep pressing the heels, leaving the center of the heels into the ground. You can try this with the wall. So if you're on the wall, the heels almost touching, then again, you want to lead yourself forward, navel in and up, and that navel will help you get there. So as you see, I'm losing my balance. But this is the part that I really need to work on. So I mean, at first you can bring your heels further in front so that at least the hips don't go too far back. But with time, I have to work on this so that I'm leading myself forward, pressing inner feet and outer feet down. So that's the fold. Now, oh, coming to the pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold over the legs. With the feet, you want to press big toe mounts of the feet down, pinky toe mounts of the feet down, and centers of the heels down. Those are important warm-up points. And by really pressing those three points down, triangulating the feet, as my teacher said, you have that push into the ground that can lead the pelvis back and up and uncurl the tailbone up. Pressing feet down, you lead the tailbone up, bring navel in and towards the chest, and then you lead the crown of the head to the ground. 
you press it deep down to contract the thighs, the quads, and that way you're stretching the hamstrings, lifting the tailbone up, navel in and towards the crown of the head, neck long and towards the crown of the head, crown of the head towards the ground, but shoulder blades up. So there's all these contrasts that keep happening. You press feet down, you lift pubic bone up. You bring navel in and down, you lift tailbone up. And then you bring crown of the head down, shoulder blades up. Let's stay here for five. Press inner feet down, outer feet down, centers of the heels down to lift the pelvis up. Four, four. Lift the crown of the head down, shoulder blades up. Crown of the head down, shoulder blades up. Four, three. Navel in and into the ribs. Pick up the bottom back ribs. Close the rib cage and lift the tailbone up. Four, two. One more time. Press feet down. Press big toe mount of the feet down. Pinky toe mount of the feet down. Center of the heels down. And then curl the tailbone up. Four, one. Press feet down to lift yourself up all the way. And exhale, hands to chest. Modifications. It's normal that at first you do not have the full forward fold. Some people take a lot of time to get it. It depends on hamstring flexibility, it depends on your lower back flexibility. When you're folding forward, everything that's in front of the body is contracting and everything that's at the back of the body is stretching. And it makes sense. From a straight line, you want to bend into two. And in order to bend into two, it's helpful if this front side squeezes together and the back side extends. If you think of it like this, if you see this, then you want the front side to be shorter and the back side to be longer, otherwise the hands don't touch anymore. You're pressing feet down and that will activate the thighs contract the thighs and that will extend the back of the legs and then you bring navel in and up, lower belly in, close the legs, that way you extend all the muscles at the back of the body, of the torso. I mean that's what we're striving towards. At the same time it takes time, so modifications. You can bend the knees so that you work on navel in and up, in and up, closing the ribs, shoulder blades back. So by bending the knees, you have more access to your lower back and you stretch your lower back further. And then with exhales, you can start pressing heels down and stretching the legs. But when you find that you're losing this connection of the body to the thighs, then keep the knees bent because you want to work on the lower back. You can have your hands on the hips while coming up and while folding. And then if you want to work on the hamstrings rather than the lower back, the exercise is simple. You keep the legs straight, but you don't go as low if your body won't bend as much. So you can inhale and exhale, bring hands to the shins and stay here. Press inner feet down, outer feet down, centers of the heels down, straighten the legs and move the tailbone up. Keep bringing the weight to the balls of the feet. Press inner feet down, outer feet down, center of the heels down to lift pubic bone in and up, tailbone up. And you'll feel a slight back bend. And that's what you're going for. You're looking for that back bend in your forward fold and you're 
looking for that forward fold in your back bends. So when you're folding forward, you want to lead the tailbone back and up like a happy dog rather than a sad dog. A happy dog, and that gives you access to a slight back bend that will help you eventually get lower to the ground. So here, you keep pressing heels down to contract the thighs, and that way you're, you'll feel your hamstring, especially by letting your weight forward to the balls of the feet. Shorter legs back, we don't lose the integrity of the torso even if we're focusing on the legs. And then inhale, come up. So those are the two variations for building two words, attaching hands to the feet. The one is knees bent, so that you stretch the lower back, and the other one is not coming as low but focusing on stretching the hamstrings by contracting the thighs. And it's that contrast of contracting the thighs that will allow you to stay safe. Um, keep those quads strong, otherwise you're just making shapes and not working on your body, which is what we want. I hope that this was useful to you. For me, it was a big breakthrough in my practice when I started contracting the right muscles. So wh whatever you're stretching, there should be that muscle that's contracted on the other side. It's the agonist and the antagonist. So you're folding forward and you're contracting the front of the body. Those are the muscles that are working. And then the antagonist muscles at the back are let loose and stretching. Having that awareness will help you have a strong practice, a healthy practice, a safe practice, and it will also help you deepen your practice because when you stay interested, you keep looking at which mus muscles should be contracted and all the time, whatever you're working on, the practice always stays interesting and always deepens.